Yeah, Daisuke and also Kiyoshi. He must be busy running around, and then also Toshiki Amano. Okay, so this is about uh, so light attenuation display. So what's that? So let me quickly introduce the motivation first. So do you see an issue in this slide? Of course not. Nothing is shown. <laughs> but now, so what's the what's what what's an issue? Any questions? Any any suggestions? So maybe you might see this is a bit semi-transparent. So maybe you think this occlusion would be actually next talk by my colleague. <laughs> but what I see the problem here is that actually the see-through displays is by nature it's additive. It always add light into your field of view. So that's why you if you try if you have ever tried let's say HoloLens outside blue sky, you basically see quite hard to see anything there because it's so bright and the brightness of the display cannot really fit into this dynamic range. And instead, I was just wondering then, can we then make a display that's something instead of adding but subtracting the light? So basically, a color filter. So that's the idea what I got and then just investigated how we can implement this kind of unique type of display that nobody have considered. And it would something look like like this, I mean, if it's just one red color. So actually here, you must need to put the, like a like a cyan blue and green color filter so that you can see red, right? And then the system, so the basic design approach I, we got is instead of just, you know, this is typical additive optical system display. You have a micro display somewhere installed or laser source, any light sources, and then you merge them with the beam combiner. Instead, we need something that filter out, like occlusion capable head mounted displays, that something can, not only the intensity, but also in a controlled color band, so different colors, not just you know black, right? And then there is, of course, works like, for example, from from Vechstein et al. They use the transmissive LCD RGB panel, and then they are more focused on how to moderate the view and like uh, yeah, gamma correction moderation or contrast reduction and so on. And instead, in our work, we introduced yet another kind of optics device, which calls a spatial phase-only spatial light moderator. So, which is essentially a reflective uh, liquid crystal on silicon, which can each pixel moderate the phase, so delay the light or refract the light, so change the you know the phase of the incoming light. And then, with using combining other optics, you can actually create colors with it. Maybe you don't believe me, but uh, physics tells us. So I don't go into the detail of the mass, but uh, this is the only mass equation we have in this talk. <laughs> and I don't need to even explain what these are. So we basically use uh, the, the property of light. One is the polarization, also property of the material, biofringencies, which have like a different refraction parameters. Maybe easiest would be to show you a demo, so something like this. So here, I actually brought the actual polarizer. So I just took a polarizer. And then behind is just my laptop monitor, which is already polarized because it's just a standard LCD panel. And then I put the, like a plastic in between the polarizer and the, the plastic material, which is also like a kind of has a property of this uh, bifringences. And then now you see through the polarizer, let me repeat the image, uh, the video again. Through the polarizer, you see different colors, even though the actual material is transparent. Actually, I'm curious if this projector is also a polarized light. If everything's correct. Uh, no, I think not. <laughs> <laughs> I had no time to test it, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so this is the, the theory, the, the mass oh, no, physics behind. And then the good thing is now with the phase-only spatial light moderator, you can control these colors or properties each pixel. Okay, so that's the point. And, oops, is it still alive? Yeah, so like, you know, maybe depending on the thickness of the property of the material, it's just gradually changing, so you see the shading of the each color in a kind of, bit looks like random, right? And then we then built the system combining this kind of special light modulator so it kind of looks like a mirror, and then combine the optics so that we can see through the world through this kind of color filter. So 
like this. Maybe you can look at my paper because the talk time is quite limited. But the point is, we cut, we, we put the several polarized and polarized beam splitter so that the, we only just pass through one polarized light from the, the scene and then you, we bypass it to the light modulator, and then each light, we assume in that light coming from the infinite distance, so it's just focused at the infinite distance, only object from far, far, far from your, yourself can see clearly. But, so for each pixel of the scene, we modulate the parameter according to the, the, the equation we show. Yeah, I think this schematic diagram might help if you have an idea of this optics or you have played. But essentially, like, you know, you just then tweak bypasses and we're back and forward and then changing the state of polarization. Now you finally get the see-through image with this color filter, pixel-wise. So what kind of colors we can see? Um, we have a limitation, actually, that the color band is rather limited so far. For example, so this figure, so it's a, LCD panel, so you can input 8-bit image so from 0 to 255, which is basically like a gray code, a grayscale image, but which is transferred into this phase shift, amount of the phase shift, how much you delay the light. And then, so in our system, if you display 0, you see something greenish, and then it, to, it get, getting like a pink or a purple, and a little bit yellow, and then coming back to like a little bit bluish color. And interestingly, if you render this color, if you render this observed, we use a spectrometer, and then we mapped into this uh, typical color gamut, and then some colors are like outside of the co common RGB gamut because each color is purely created by not a mixture of three RGB colors, instead like a clearly a taken from certain color band in the real wavelength space, if the background is uniform. So we had to use a white uniform light source also. And then, yeah, maybe this is made too much detail, but you see this color filter response is gradually changing, smoothly changing from like one color to another color. This is in our simulation and we just measured our system then with spectrometer, then it's kind of consistent somehow. And then, so okay, now we got the color table. So now question is how to, oh, and this is just a, like a visualization of the same graph in a, color space, so like wavelengths and the input values. So you see actually each color field have like a rather wide color band, but still it's sh it, it, it taking color from this specific band. Green is from like green color band and the yellow is from yellowish color band. All right, and then the problem is now the color we have, the basis colors, it's only 255 and not like pure RGB. So we need to, when we want to display like a color in between, we have to think about to synthesize it. So in our preliminary implementation, we just simply took the time sequential approach. So like time sequential, I mean projector, RGB projector with color wheel, wheels. So we just, uh, for each input color, we just pick up three colors nearby and then just uh, temporarily mixed each phase values for each pixel of each image. Then we just run it on the display. Then in a, if you have a proper exposure time for your camera, eye camera, then you can see image something like that. Okay, uh, maybe I skip. This is just like parameter for the time sequence of phase rendering, how, how detailed, um, yeah. And then so, okay, so these are examples. So we wanted to show, for example, that the teapot or a scenery I took in Kyoto and then display these things and then in a simulated ideal way, so you get this color chroma thing. And then the right, both right hand side, there is the actual rendered image, which has actually quite like the color is slightly quite degraded, but still it can show something like as a color. So. We are, we are happy with this as an initial start for this kind of subtractive displays. And then here is the actual video you would see if you see through the system. So here we put, oh, sorry if my voice was a bit low, small before. And so here you have this white background. And then if you see through the system, so now I think my camera would s soon focus it. Yeah, now. So, this is the actual 
image you would see. And because it's see-through, so if the background color changes, the color sometimes get flickered because you can't really take green out of blue background, for example. All right. And the motivation was, okay, if you can see image created in a bright back environment. So we turn on the, the lighting and then it's quite bright white light source and then we can actually, it's kind of complementary, right? Because it's as subtractive, brighter the background light, the, the brighter the image and the sharper. Uh, I mean brighter. So it's quite like opposite of the, so the advantage of C3 display in our attenuation display is disadvantages and vice versa. That's, I think, quite interesting concept. So, two minutes. Um, applications. So we wanted to show some, some potential of this color subtracting display system. So we implemented, for example, like this kind of vision augmentation system where you can, you just add a scene camera again, and then you have observed, let the scene camera see the world, what kind of colors are there. And then, for example, if you want to emphasize or, or I, I don't know, like reinforce the color of the scene, you just render the same color band there. Then the color gets even sharper. I, I think you perceive this difference from this original one, and then top right is like this uh, like enhanced color. Or you can like just diminish color, so to say. You just cancel or you just block all these color bands that on, on the scene camera, then you see the, the background gets darker. So perhaps you combine both together and then you might, for example, emphasize a certain field of view of your scene, make it colorized and the rest is just grayed out, for example, in the future. And apparently there are many issues. For example, one issue is if the background is not white, uniform, of course you have to subtract something. I mean, you can't really render something red on a blue background or if you have some like colored background, you should also have to compensate this background color so that each color is balanced. Then, so some, maybe this is very preliminary result and doesn't work well, but we at least show that just uh, con, con, I mean, combining this background scene image and then just uh, tuning the filter also makes the display image closer to the idea image we want to render. Perhaps the actually better solution might be just combine the occlusion capable displays, but that's yet kind of option to explore. So other limitations before we, I close this talk is like the, the peaks in, the, in one color filter, let's say given one phase value, is actually multiple. This is because the fa our optics is just only one single modulator layer, but uh, uh, per works or uh, research says that there is also cap possibility to cascading these kind of light modulator several times, then you can sharpen these, or, or you can narrow, make it make the band narrower. So maybe that's one option to explore. And uh, yeah, again, the white bands is also the same thing. And obviously what's missing in our system is the amplitude modulation, because it's only the phase moderator. It doesn't consider really much about the amplitude moderation. So perhaps we might combine like a DMD project, DMD chip, then you can also combine both amplitude moderation and the color moderation. All right, that's it. Um, yeah, thank you for the, uh, attending this talk. And then, so we have this project link here. And if you have any questions, you can ask me any, uh, send me an email. And we are also searching for good students. So <laughs> come by if you're interested in. Thank you. Sure. If you combine it with another display that adds light. Yes, that's uh, obviously interesting yeah, application, then we are actually thinking about that. <laughs>